From the majestic Tetons to the cattle-covered grasslands, they're talking about football, Wyoming football. This is Bill Young bringing you all the top plays from the Cowboys 1969 football season, the centennial of college football. So let's go to Memorial Stadium for the season and Western Athletic Conference opener. Opening at home for the first time since 1965, the Cowboys entertained Arizona before 20,400 and a regional television audience. The game was scoreless before this big play opened the second quarter, an 18-yard keeper around left end by quarterback Ed Sinikowski. Four plays later, Sinikowski connects within Ron Hill for 22 yards and the first touchdown. Late in the second period, the Wildcats' fine runner, Ron Gardine, fumbles and Cowboy middle guard Steve Adamson recovers at the Arizona 20 with 25 seconds left. Bob Jacobs, en route to the greatest kicking year of any college football player, makes it 10 to nothing at half with this 37-yarder. <laughs> Sophomore tailback Frosty Franklin starts the pokes rolling in the third, showing great balance and determination after taking a 13-yarder from Senikowski. The combination clicks again. This time for 28 yards. But on fourth down and nine, Jacobs is called on again and makes it 13 to nothing with this 38 yard boot. Wildcats drive to the Wyoming 13 before sophomore safety Jerry Berry intercepts and goes all the way. 88 yards for the score, 20 to nothing, Cowpokes. Here's one that didn't make it into the record books because of a penalty, but it's a beauty all the same. Frosty Franklin's 100-yard kickoff return. These final two do count, however. Sinikowski passes 11 to tight end George Anderson. And that sets up Bob Jacobs' third field goal of the afternoon from 27 yards away for the final score, Wyoming 23, Arizona 7. Air Force was next in Falcon Stadium, and as usual, the game provided fireworks aplenty, both offensively and defensively. Cowboy co-captain Larry Nels gets after Falcon quarterback Gary Baxter early, here grounding him for a five-yard loss. Then Larry does it again for eight more. But the Cowboys are down 12 to nothing on the strength of Baxter's fine passing before Bob Jacobs connects with this 15-yarder. Nels keeps up the pressure, however, preventing further Air Force bombardment. Here, Baxter goes down for minus six. And once again, for a minus eight. And this one for minus five to turn the tide in favor of the Cowboys.
Frosty Franklin starts a Wyoming march with this 16-yard explosion. Rookie Gary Fox, who came off the bench to complete 10 of 11 passes, shows how with this six-yarder to tight end Paul Taylor. Then Gary sneaks through for his first collegiate score, and the Pokes cut the margin 15 to 10 at halftime. The seesaw battle continues in the third, and Air Force leads 18 to 17 when this happens. Fox to Taylor for nine. Then Franklin on the option rolls for 24 to the Falcon 17. And from there, Bob Jacobs booms one through for a 20 to 18 Wyoming edge. The determined Cowboys begin the drive for the clincher with this eight yard toss from Fox to split end Bill Karanikas. Then Gary out foxes the Falcon defense, faking into the middle and looping this two yarder to Taylor for the TD, Wyoming 27, Air Force 18. The Baxter passes the Falcons back to 27-25 and is driving them again before linebacker Brent Englewright blitzes him to preserve the two-point margin of victory for the Cowboys. For 57 minutes, it was a typical Wyoming CSU Donnybrook, but the final three minutes turned into a Keystone Cops chase that gave the Cowboys 26 points. It didn't start that way, however. Sinikowski begins Wyoming back from a three-to-nothing deficit with this second quarter keeper for 11. Then Jacobs knots the count with this effort from 21 yards away. After halftime schooling, the Cowboys find a weak spot in the Ram defense, and sophomore fullback Jeff Howe probes it for this 47-yard touchdown sprint. In George Kellerman blunts a Ram try for a comeback with this tackle of Chip Maxwell for a loss of 12. Then Sinikowski goes to Paul Taylor for 18. Follows it with this strike to flanker John Griffin for 29. And Jacobs connects on another 21-yard field goal for a 13-3 Wyoming lead. Then Bob ignites the explosion with another three-pointer from 27 out at 2.58 left in the fourth quarter. CSU quarterback Scott Simmons is smacked by end Rich Zimmerman and linebacker Tom Gorman picks off the fumble in midair and carries it in for the score at 2.31 left. Simmons is again victimized. His errant pass is intercepted by Barry at the 24 and carried in for the TD at 2.15 left, 30-3 Wyoming. Nineteen sixty five was the last time the miners came to Laramie and they lost thirty eight to fourteen. It was just as tough for them this time. Again trailing in the second period the Cowboys swarm back. Jeff Howe opening at the bid with this eleven yard run. Eleven more on this pass play from Gary Fox to Bill Karanikas to the minor twenty five. The Texans rise up however on fourth and one at the one. Jacobs gets the nod and ties the score at three three on this eighteen yard effort. The Miners go ahead 9-3, and the Pokes have to come back again. Fox to Karanikas again begins it, this time for 15. The same combination for 10, this time to the Miner, 22. Again, Fox to pass, and he finds Griffin open for a one-yarder to complete the 66-yard march. The Cowboys go ahead for the first time, 10 to nine at the half. Bob Jacobs increases the cushion to start the third with this 35-yard field goal. Then a defensive lineman's dream. Tackle Rich Troutwine grabs off a minor pass that has been deflected by in George Kellerman and rumbles 35 yards for the touchdown and a 20 to nine Wyoming lead.
still in the third period. Fox finds Griffin open for this 22-yard shot. Then the Billings, Montana sophomore drills Karanikas for 17 and the score. But the Pokes aren't through yet. Sinikowski running the team now, passing 14 to Franklin. Then Frosty gives the Miners an open field running demonstration for 21 to the Miner 8. Jacobs makes it 30 to 9 from 25 yards out. His final play now with seven seconds left. Senikowski delivers to flanker Mike Leak on his knees in the end zone for the 37 to 9 clincher. The Cowboys taught Brigham Young a lesson in opportunism, turning eight Cougar miscues into a 40 to 7 route. Here's how. Linebacker Brink in, Brent Inglewright pounces on a BYU fumble the first time the Cougars get the ball. And then Frosty Franklin sweeps left end for 10 to the BYU 3. Frosty's TD was thrown for a loss by a film jam, but this Inglewright interception wasn't. Watch. And from the one, Gary Fox sneaks over for a 14-0 Polk lead with 338 still left in the first quarter. George Kellerman recovered another Cougar fumble, and Bob Jacobs turns it into three points with this 42-yarder, 17 to nothing, Cowboys at the quarter. The Cowboys unload the bomb in the second quarter. Sinikowski throwing, and Bill Karanikas legging it down the sideline for 70 yards, 24 to 7, Wyoming. Opportunity knocks once more causing a BYU fumble, which is covered by middle guard Dan Gleason with 13 seconds remaining in the half. Jacobs kicks his 13th field goal and 17 tries, the second 42-yarder of the game, boosting the halftime score to 27-7 Cowboys. These three plays featuring Ed Sinikowski to wrap it up. First passing to Mike Leak for 28. Then throwing to Larry Suganuma for 21 more to the BYU 12. Finally, Ed turns left in for the final five yards and a 40 to seven Cowboy triumph. But now let's take a halftime break. While you enjoy some scenes from wonderful Wyoming, the great land outdoors, I'll remind you about 1970, another big year of Cowboy football. Five exciting games highlight the home schedule. Air Force Academy for the opener in revamped Memorial Stadium September 19th, and Utah State September 26th are the non-conference foes. Then three great Western Athletic Conference games follow. Arizona State October 3rd, Utah October 17th, and New Mexico October 24th for homecoming. Here's the complete roundup for 1970. September 19, Air Force Academy at Laramie. September 26th, Utah State at Laramie. October 3rd, Arizona State at Laramie. October 10th, 
Colorado State U at Fort Collins, October 17th, Utah at Laramie, October 24th, New Mexico at Laramie on homecoming, October 31st, Brigham Young at Provo, November 7th, Texas El Paso at El Paso, November 21st, Arizona at Tucson, and for the second year in a row, November 28th, Houston in the wondrous Astrodome. Right now is the time to start thinking football, cowboy football. Get set for the 70s, get season tickets. But now the Cowboys are ready to ride again, so let's get back to the final half of 1969. The Spartans of San Jose State smelled upset, but they were in Laramie for the first time and it was homecoming. Zimikowski and Karanikas startled everyone with the Cowboys' first play of the game, a 46-yard gem for the score. Minutes later, the two team up on this 13-yard game. The play gets Bob Jacobs in range, and the big junior hits from 41 yards away 10 to nothing for the Cowboys. The Spartans make it 10 to 7 at the half and hold the pokes until Jeff Howe barrels for 12 to start the third quarter. Franklin tries the same hole and nets 11. Martin stiffen, but Jacobs goes over them for 43 yards and ties Jerry DePoister's school record of 15 field goals in one season. Two more plays before taking to the road. Fox to Taylor for 15. The gain sets up Jacobs' 16th and record-breaking three-pointer of the season from 41 yards downfield, giving Wyoming the final victory margin, 16 to 7. The first road game in more than a month brought the Cowboys to Tempe and the Western Athletic Conference showdown with Arizona State. The aroused Sun Devils, looking for their first WAC football title ever, built a 17 to nothing lead in the second period before Sinikowski found Paul Taylor for 16. The same duo again, this time for 10. Jacob's 52 yard field goal attempt rolled dead at the ASU one and in George Kellerman smacked Jim Shaughnessy in the end zone for a safety and Wyoming's first points of the night, 17 to two. The Polk's defense, which finished second in the nation against the rush, set up Wyoming's final points. George Kellerman blocking and ASU punt and recovering in the end zone for the TD, but it's not enough. Let's watch Gary Fox in action on this final series. First a 29 yarder to Larry Suganuma. Then 18 to Paul Taylor. And to Bill Karanikas for 10. And finally to Taylor, who's playing before hometown fans for 14, but the Sun Devils come away with a 30 to 14 win and their first Western Athletic Conference football title. Old Nemesis Utah was up next on the Salt Lake Battleground. The Cowboys must fight from behind again. Sophomore defensive back George Herrick recovers a redskin fumble at the Utah 17 to start it. Bob Jacobs pulls the pokes to seven to three with this 19 yarder. 10 more Ute points are up, however, before this big play. 
the longest pass play in Cowboy grid history, 88 yards from Fox to Mike Leak, and that makes it 17 to 10, Utah. Defenders George Kellerman and Brent Inglewright team up for this interception. Kellerman deflecting and Inglewright intercepting, but the Utes take a seven-point bulge into the dressing room. <music> Phil Carpa gets into the defensive act in the third quarter, blunting a Redskin TD drive by smacking quarterback Ray Groth for a loss of four. Fox to Franklin coming up, and the Polk storm back, this for 13. But then the Ute Medicine Man puts the hex on Fox and Norm Thompson intercepts at the three and gallops 97 yards to put the game out of reach, 34 to 10. These final Cowboy last ditch efforts, Frosty Franklin for 16, and this one, Ed Kern finds daylight for 18, but the Redskins do the victory dance, 34 to 10. New Mexico's improved Lobos were next in Albuquerque. Cowboy frost frustration continues as the Lobos lead 21 to three in the third before Larry Nels drops David Bookert for a loss of six at the Lobo six. Punter Jay Morrison gets a low snap from center and wisely tosses the ball out of the end zone for a safety. Lobos 21, Wyoming five. Minutes later, the Cowboys are moving again Sonikowski to Taylor for 14. Then Ed connects with Bill Karanikas for 32 in the score, narrowing it to 21 to 12, New Mexico. Two final plays before moving to the Astrodome. First, Sinikowski to Taylor for 13. And this one for 18, the last big play at Albuquerque, the Lobos winning it 24 to 12. Houston's Blue Bonnet Bowl bound Cougars hosted the Cowboys in the season finale in the fabulous Astrodome. Houston speed accounted for 20 big points in the first quarter, but the Pokes retaliated in the second as Jim Barrows rambled back 42 yards with this punt. Taylor is the target of this 15-yarder from Ed Sinikowski. Taylor once again, this one for nine to the Houston one. Sinikowski sneaks it over for the Cowboys' first score with 6.59 left in the half. Wyoming moves again on its next possession. Sinikowski to Franklin for eight to open it. Jeff Howe is the target this time for seven. George Anderson's turn this time, another nine yards. Again, Anderson takes Sinikowski's pass for nine but the drive died when Jacob's field goal missed. But this final big drive of 1969 didn't. Tailback Tony Carducci reels off the longest run of the season, 59 yards to the Cougar one. Gary Fox climaxes it with this one yard run, the last play of 1969, Wyoming 14, Houston 41. And now the seniors who contributed so much to the success of Cowboy football.
co-captain and defensive tackle, Larry Nels, North Syracuse, New York. Co-captain and offensive guard, Tommy Tucker, Lansing, Michigan. Middle guard, Steve Adamson, Winthrop, Massachusetts. Tight end, George Anderson, Wyandotte, Michigan. Defensive back, Jim Barrows, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Linebacker, Brent Inglewright, Muskegon, Michigan. Defensive back, Jim Keene, Kansas City, Kansas. Defensive end, George Kellerman, Butler, Pennsylvania. Split end, Bill Karanikas, Uniondale, New York. Offensive tackle, Tom Lentz, Hermosa, South Dakota. Flanker, Larry Suganuma, Pearl City, Hawaii. Tight end, Paul Taylor, Phoenix, Arizona. Defensive tackle, Rich Troutwine, West Patterson, New Jersey. And offensive tackle, Al Zerfus, Natticoke, Pennsylvania. <laughs> 